What's up guys, how's it going? I'm back with another video, this time updating questions and comments about 1RPM. Um, a lot of you guys still had comments and questions about things that happen with 1RPM or where to go, what to do. And first and foremost, I wanna say that I am not sponsored by 1RPM to do these videos and I do not work for 1RPM. So if there's something above and beyond what needs to be handled, that can't be simply answered, it needs to go to support. Just contact support, and that's what we're gonna start with this video, is contacting support. So you have two options on contacting support. You can either scroll down no matter where you are, on the right side where it shows help, underneath it's gonna say support. That's the first place you can go if you need help with something like, a lot of you guys ask me about deleting your profile, or deleting music or deleting an album or um, how to update your, your music or change the name of something or something like that. You go to support. Okay, so that's the first way to go to support. The second way is to open up your menu. When at the bottom, it says support and you go to my tickets. Now, this is different from the last video I updated because they just recently changed this. Um, when you do this now, before you would just send in your email, there was a little tab over here um, where the newsletter was, where you could submit a report and they would respond to your email through your own personal email address. Now, the way it works is you go to the support tab, which is built into the website and you submit your ticket. So you're going to state what's going on and then they are going to reply. So if you click support, this is what's going to happen. It's going to come up. It's going to come up like this. You're going to get a scroll down. And in these three categories, you're going to submit your ticket for whatever is wrong. Additional request is usually where you guys are asking all the questions. They would go there, like how to delete something, how to remove something. That's where you would go. Additional requests. If you have any requests, that's pretty much it. For those of you that were asking how to change your music or how to change your album or how to change the title, that's request an update. Also, when you're working on getting your official YouTube channel or if you need your topic channel on YouTube addressed, it would go to an update or additional request. Either or is fine. They're going to respond to it. Um, request YouTube claim removal. If someone tries to claim something on your video and you want it removed, they can handle it or you can address it yourself. But if you feel like you don't want to deal with it, you can have them remove the claim. Like if someone claimed that you stole footage from, you know, some, some, something else, you know, like say you use uh, royalty free images and they're like, Hey, you stole that image from me. I own that image and blah, blah, blah. You can have one RPM deal with it and you know, they'll, they'll handle it for you, but that's where you want to go. That's how you submit stuff. I've done it since they've changed this system and it works out great. They usually respond within 24 hours, which is why I love one, one RPM because they do reply so fast. Um, it makes it great. And I really, I really, I can say I really do admire that because a lot of companies don't get to you as fast as them. And especially when it's something that needs to be taken care of right away or you know something that needs to happen because something might have happened to your music or you know someone else's video might have been added to your topic channel like mine did um they took care of it right away and, and they they processed everything pretty fast so that's the first thing i wanted to cover next i'm going to cover um videos and music uploads all right guys so for music and for video uploads, singles, EPs, all that stuff, you're going to go back to the menu and you're going to go to distribution tools. Distribution tools is going to cover everything you need from managing your music to uploading music. You see there's an upload music checklist. There's a upload video checklist and there's a manage videos. Someone in the comments once said that you can't upload videos through one RPM. That is not true. For as long as I've been using 1RPM, which is about two and a half years now, this has always been there in the menu. Whether you've noticed it or not, I don't know. I don't know. I've gotten a couple people who said that you can't do it. It's literally there. I don't make music videos, so 
I have no reason to use this, but there is a checklist and the checklist is exactly the same as it is uploading a single or an EP or an album. It's going to ask you all the same things. Is it, is it this the original video? Is it a remix? Is it a cover? It's going to ask you what genre it is, subgenre. It's going to ask you the language, the original release date and the official release date. If, you know, if, um, if the album was released at a different date or something like that, that's what the second one is for. Um, if the album or the music or the song or the single has already been released and you're doing a music video for it later, they want to know what the UPC code is for that track. If you don't have one, they'll give you one. And then they cover copyright. A lot of people said that 1RPM does not copyright. And in the comments, I told you, yes, they do. And, and in the comments, other people told you, yes, they do. They do cover your copyright for your recording. As far as your release, they're going to ask you where in the world you want it released. You can check, you can uncheck. It's that simple. Other than that, I can't move forward because I don't have a video to upload. It's going to ask you for all the artists and songwriters. That includes who performed in the track or the video, um, who worked on the music, who wrote the music, who edited the music, who's performing the music, etc. cetera. Uh, if, if those people want royalties, it's best to have them listed because you never know in the future. They might be like, yo, man, you know what? I saw that that video blew up. I saw that track blew up. You know, I want my money. It's better to just list them now and have them receive royalties than to try to do it later and then go to court and all that stuff. Not worth it. Um, upload music videos where you're going to upload your MP3 or your MP4, however you have it formatted. Always rewatch after you've uploaded it, always preview it to make sure that it works, that it sounds right that maybe it didn't get messed up during the upload process, you know, always just double check your stuff, your thumbnail. I mean, that's self-explanatory. The stores are through the list of all their partners. So you can choose which stores you want it to be sent to. Um, if some stores have music video areas, it'll show up there. If they don't, they probably won't be on the list. And then preview and distribute will be the last thing just to kind of go through everything, make sure it's right. Make sure it plays well. Make sure it sounds right. Make sure it's loading properly. Make sure all the places that you want it to go to are listed. If you want to make any changes after you hit preview and distribute and you submit that video or that song, you cannot make any changes to it yourself. After that, you have to go and submit a ticket. You have to submit a ticket to make any changes. And like I said before, you know, you have to give them the update that, hey, I made a mistake. It, if you catch it earlier, the better, because after it's been released and it's already released in stores, the stores start tracking how many times it's been played. So that way they can give you your royalties. If you make any changes to your music or your music video after it's been released, all that data will be reset. I want to make that very clear. One RPM is not doing the reset. They're resubmitting it under the changes that needed to be made. But the store that it's going to, let's say Amazon Music Unlimited, for example, you send your music video to them or your track and you're like, oh, my God, I misspelled the name of this one song. They're going to have to resubmit the entire album or the you know or the music video all over again. And that's going to reset your numbers because now they had to make a change. and Now it's considered all new content. So. Keep track of your numbers. If you're trying to use your music as a way to, you know, show how successful you are, maybe you're trying to get signed by a label or maybe you're trying to get picked up, you know, by a company, you need to show those numbers. Those numbers need to be recorded. So, you know, before you make any changes, this is just my word of advice. You don't have to take it if you don't want it. But before you make any changes to your music or your music videos, before they reset the numbers, Take screenshots of where it's at. So that way you have numbers before it, it was reset. This is how many plays it had before I realized I made a mistake, you know, and then you add those numbers on top of where it is later after the change. That's all I'm going to say for that. For music, it's the exact same thing. They have the same music checklist. They do cover copyright. They're going to ask you your artist or your band name. Is it a single? Is it an EP? Is it an album? What genres it's covered in? And if you need to make a change to your genre after you release it, they will still reset 
your numbers because it's going into a different genre with different people who listen to that music. So that's why I always stress to you guys, make sure you're in the right genre and you're finding the audience that listens to your music uh, because you don't want those numbers reset for any reason like it happened to me. Other than that, it's the same as the music video, same thing. Um, additional artists and songwriters, same thing. Upload the tracks, same thing as uploading the music video. Uploading album art is the same thing as the thumbnail, selecting stores, preview and distribute, all the same thing. You know, this is all the same thing. It's going to be the same. If you have any problems afterward, like I said, submit a ticket, you know, it's right there. And that's really all there is for this section. Um, as far as anything else, like I said, a lot of you guys have asked me about deleting an album. I tried to do that two years ago and they told me that they don't delete stuff. They just reject it. So it never leaves. So for some reason I made a mistake on this one and I tried to make changes to it. And I was like, Hey, um, I made an accident with this album. They were like, don't worry about it. We just won't release it. But the content just stays there. They don't delete anything. Why? I don't know. Their process might have changed in the past couple years, but other than that, they don't make changes like that. They won't delete it. So you might have to contact them and find out, um, you know, what's going on with it. Why, why, you know, if they can do anything, um, other than that, on that note for this section, a lot of you guys asked me about their partners. You can select when you're uploading music, which partners you do not want music to go to. That includes like SoundCloud or, you know, iHeartRadio or Facebook or YouTube music or something like that. You don't have to have it go to all of these partners. You can just pick and choose when you're doing your list where you want it to go. When it asks you the stores, these are the stores and it has a list of all of them and it has an update on the right, which tells you if it was received, if it was accepted, if it's on the way. Sometimes um, certain places have a have a weird way of doing things. So like, Sh like Shazam, Shazam is always pending. No matter how many times they send it, it gets approved by Shazam, but it always says pending. I have no clue why it's been like that for a long time. Uh, as far as other places, like as you see like YouTube and you saw like Facebook and um, iTunes, it says it was canceled. The reason why they'll do that is because your music might be listed as generic or you might not be able to receive um, royalties off of it because it, it's not considered unique enough or different sounding enough by their standards. So they'll do that as far as um, music not being accepted for being instrumental or ambient. There's a, there's different ways to do it now. Um, YouTube has updated their policies, so that has to be redone for all my albums and all my singles. And, um, they will still accept it even if it is ambient or an instrumental, but now they're not going to monetize it before they wouldn't accept it at all. So that's that, that's that tab. I'm gonna move on to the next one. All right, lastly, we're gonna cover analytics and playlist placement. All right, so as you see in the menu, you can scroll down to analytics. You can go to daily, monthly, classic, playlist tracker, content ID, Spotify for artists. All right, I'm gonna cover playlists first because that's something a lot of you have been interested in. Um, one RPM does do playlist placement through Spotify and Apple music. They also do it through Deezer, but you know, Deezer is, you got to know your market, man. Like that's the best way I can put it. You got to know your market. You got to know what's popular. So for me, I have two songs that are in a playlist. All right. These two songs, I can click on it. And it'll give you a bit of information, but it doesn't give you a lot. So on Spotify, there is a playlist called on repeat right now in the past seven days, I've gotten 34 plays on this playlist, which makes it the number one track from what I've seen on my phone on uh, the past seven days, it's gotten the most plays on that playlist, which is good. 
you know that that's good at least it's it's happening if you want your music to be submitted for a playlist you have to submit your music to one rpm with two months advance within two months prior to your release date they say the more time the better because they want to listen to your music and the stores that are going to have your music want to listen to your music the more time they have to listen to your music or your content they can place it in a playlist and i want to make that very clear they need time it's not like they're going to listen to something that you just uploaded yesterday and sent off and you know by next week it's going to be in a playlist no they have to listen to it they have to make sure that it sounds right they have to make sure that it's going into the correct playlist for me my music is made to be put on repeat that's how i make my music in general so the fact that one of my tracks made it into an on repeat playlist makes me happy because that's what i make it for i make it so that you can listen to it endlessly on a loop to either help you sleep or help you focus or whatever you want to use it for it's there to be put on repeat the other track that was submitted for a playlist i don't know what release radar is i've had a hard time finding this playlist on spotify but it is there i've gotten one play so far i don't know how long it's been there it doesn't really show you a date but it's there so this is why i always tell you guys know your genre and know your audience you know who likes to listen to the music that you are making you're going to have to do some research on that you're going to have to find out where you fit where you're placed so that way you can get placed into these playlists and you can find people who are going to you know be fans of your music it's all for you you know you just got to give people the time so one rpm is a service they're trying to help you grow your business your community your fan base and the best way to do it is to submit it way in advance like i'm almost submitting my music now a year in advance like i released I submitted my next album, I think, back in January for the next album I have that's coming out in October. It's been listened to so much that now I'm starting to receive emails about how good the music is. I wouldn't have got those emails if I didn't submit it way in advance. So for me personally, I say submit your music at least two to three months in advance. That's what I asked them about in their support tab. They said, give them two months. I say about three months is good. Three to six months is probably the best time. The more people have their hands on listening to your music, the better they can place it. And the same thing goes with Pandora. Um, Pandora is a curation playlist site, uh, kind of like an online radio site. And for them, the when they listen to your music, because they listen to your music as well, they try to figure out where it fits in a playlist. So let's say for me, like I said, most of my music kind of sounds lo-fi. It's kind of relaxing. You know, it has that has that vibe where you can put it on repeat and kind of zone out or just focus or get rest, whatever. So they have to figure out what other artists make music that sound very similar to me. And the problem is, is that a lot of my music gets compared to Daft Punk. So if you know Daft Punk, you know how their music sounds, but my music gets compared to their music. So it makes it hard for curators to put my music somewhere when they're like, crap, it sounds like Daft Punk, but he also has this lounge music sound that makes it very relaxing. So they have to try to figure out who they can compare on the opposite spectrum of Daft Punk, where Daft Punk is more energetic, more high energy, you know, kind of like techno progressive house, but at the same time, they got to find someone who's like on that level, but chill and very relaxing, kind of like new jobbies or like samurai shampoo records like that. That's, that's hard. All right. So your music is not as complicated as mine, but at the same time, you know, having them try to figure out who connects to that music and who relates to it and stuff like that is very difficult. So, that's a that's how that works other than that we'll go to monthly analytics um i kind of got distracted by by the playlist but i wanted to get that out so that it was very clear that you guys understand how your music gets processed that's why you want to give them as much time as possible um as far as your analytics go there's a lot that goes into it as far as like 
streams, you know, or how many times it's been played, how many times it's been listened to, you know, like as you see with my numbers right here, um, music streams, and this isn't even updated. Uh, and it's been counted already 40,000 times, 40,000 plus of streams. That's mostly from like Pandora and from Spotify, which I'll show you in a moment. That's how much, you know, comes out of it. And then they show you how much you're getting from it. If you have videos, music videos, of course, that's going to that's going to elevate it. You know, you have music videos. If you have downloads from like Amazon or something like that, you know, it's going to show you. And like I said, these aren't updated at live. You know, they're not updated at real time is what I meant to say. Um, they're updated like over a week, over two weeks. So you're not going to see accurate numbers whenever you look at it. But I mean, from March to April and like see May isn't even listed. And I don't know why. I don't know why, because there was more than that in May because I, I monitor my own. But these aren't always updated. So you have to kind of track it yourself, which is why I advise that you guys go through your analytics from the source itself. So like go to Spotify for artists and pull up your numbers, you know, go to Apple Music for artists, pull up your numbers, go to Pandora, pull up your numbers. They all have their own artists outlets for you to pull up your numbers to see how well you're doing on their platforms individually. I always advise that because you want to know where it's coming from, how good you're doing, because your distributor's information is always a little bit slow. So for this, we're going to go to daily. This is going to cover the last seven days in Spotify. Since the epidemic, I've had a spike in plays. You know, as you're seeing like 200, 250, 240, 340, 400 plays, 300 plays, you know, it varies throughout the week, um, certain days more than others. But over the past seven days, since the epidemic, I've been watching it. Spotify, I've had a huge spike. And before I've said in other videos that Pandora is where my audience was. So now my audience for Pandora has gone down. Why is my audience? my Pandora play has gone down. That's because there aren't any massage parlors open, you know, like, like my music gets played in massage parlors or at, um, open houses for realtors or at events. Um, I've even heard my music played at a, at a, um, at a convention. Um, I've heard it played in a, in a uh, restaurant once that freaked me out. Uh, but it freaked me out in a good way. Like I was excited, like, Oh my God, my music is being played. But, um, but that's what I'm saying. Like, because of the differences in the times, you're going to see differences in where your audience is. So now my music has spiked through Spotify and it's gone down through Pandora because the people who listen to my music through Pandora or who play my music through Pandora, they're not able to do what they normally do. So Pandora numbers have dropped, but people are listening to music now more through Spotify because they're stuck at home, you know, during this pandemic or they're trying to chill out or they're trying to get some sleep or they're freaked out about work, you know, whatever the case may be, or maybe they might be, you know, working on a project or, you know, chilling out, you know, smoking, who knows what, but I know what my music is used for and who listens to it because I know my audience and Spotify shows that they are finding my music. So that's it for analytics. I mean, you can go to downloads, but no one's like downloading it. I already know that. Like I said, my genre is, is way different than probably yours. Um, but when you're looking at analytics, you want to look for where your music is being played how it's being played, where it's being played. Uh, you know, you're going to want to look for the pie charts and stuff and show like, you know, which, which track is most popular or, you know, where it's being played. Every place is different. Um, and that's the main thing. Like every, every distributor has a different way of showing how stuff works through their site or through through their ways of keeping up with your music. And that's why I don't really rely on them 
to show me what the numbers are because they're not that accurate. I'm going to go to the source. I'm going to go to Spotify. I'm going to go to Apple. I'm going to go to all those sources and figure it out for myself because my numbers through Apple, through Apple Music are actually way different than what 1RPM shows me. And that's because I have an artist page through Apple now. So now that I have an artist page, I can look up those numbers and I actually see different numbers than one RPM. It's not one RPM. It's not their fault that their their numbers are different. It's just what they receive on, you know, what's viable. So I hope I made that pretty clear. I hope you guys understand that. Sorry if I repeated myself too much, but I just wanted to make sure that you guys understand exactly how that works because I get a lot of questions on that. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's nothing really else to go over. If you guys get confused about anything, always pull up the menu. You can scroll through each tab. It tells you exactly what you're looking for. You know, it, it literally does. It tells you exactly what you're looking for. If you're curious about it, just click on it. Nothing bad's going to happen if you just click on it and open up a page. Uh, the only thing that can really happen is, you know, you might find out something new that you didn't know. And that's really it. I mean, like, like one RPM has their own music player. They have their own, um, kind of like their own page for people to come in and listen to your music, like their own type of their own type of like Apple music or their own type of storefront. But I don't think anyone uses it. I don't know. I've never seen anything. I've never seen any sales from it. I've never seen any streams from it or anything. But that's pretty much it. If you have anything that, like I said, that can't be answered in the menu, because they try to simplify it as much as possible, submit a support ticket. Just make a claim, support it, you know, submit a ticket, get your answers answered. Like I said, a lot of you ask about like, how do you, how, you know, how do I delete my music or how do I delete an album? How do I delete my account? Ask them. I don't work for them. I don't work. You know, I'm not sponsored by them. I just use their services because they're free. And like, I don't have a problem with them. You know, like I said, it's at the bottom. It's in the menu. You know, however you need to contact them. Either way, it's there. Everything you guys need is there. Even they, they cover their information in their own website. As far as like, you know, what they're doing, who their partners are where your music is going, how to, you know, do all this stuff. They cover it all on the website. You just got to explore the website. Most people I find that ask me questions, they haven't explored the website. Like the person who was like, why can't I upload a video? I don't know what you're talking about because they have video distribution. You know, like not trying to be mean, but it's just like, did you explore the website? Did you look at it first before you commented on my video and asked me about it? You know, social media integration. Somebody asked me about um, about like getting certif getting certified through your social medias and stuff like that. At the time when I uploaded my first music with them, they were verifying like your Instagram and stuff like that. That's why they had the social media integration because after you hit a certain point, they would verify your account and give you the blue check mark. You know, they would do that for you. Now, I don't know. I really don't know. Because the things that bother me about certain things that distributors say is like they'll try to do like like this, like advertising. Like it's like, okay, you know, we'll advertise your stuff and blah blah blah. And it's like I've never seen one ad for any of my music like that. You know, we're we're like but I don't make music videos either. So don't get me wrong. I'm not like I'm blaming them, but you know, mostly when you see these type of commercials on YouTube, it's somebody's entire music video. I don't make music videos. I'm not a singer. I'm not a performer. You know, I make instrumentals for my very niche genre. So I wouldn't blame them if, you know, my, my videos never came up, but when they start talking about stuff, like I remember they had like, um, they have their own new artist playlist on Spotify or something like that. Like my music was never there. You know, I never saw anything about like a social media shout out or something or like, 
you know, have being put on a playlist for new artists. I never saw anything like that from them. So like that kind of bothers me. But other than that, like, like I said, just go through their, go through their website. That's what I did. I went through when I first signed up with one RPM, I went through their website. I literally looked at all the stuff that I'm clicking on. Now I read through it. I clicked on the links and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I went through as much as I could. And I was like, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. You know, I'm going with the right place. They're not going to rip me off, you know, from behind or anything like that and blah, blah, blah. And before I signed up with them, I asked them questions. Someone else was asking me about a sync license. Yes, they do. They do do that. You know, it's there. It's there on the website. Um, they do YouTube content ID, which is a part of sync licensing um, recognition systems to know that that's your music um lyrics rights you know there are places that will pay you to upload your lyrics for some weird reason um all this stuff is here this is what they do even with soundcloud uh you know it's all there you just have to go through it and once i went through it myself i listened to all these videos and on on their youtube channel and stuff and i looked them up and they even they even offered I don't even know if it's still there, but um, the one of the main reasons why I went with one RPM was because they had a music video um, studio. They had a free studio somewhere. I think it's in New York um, that you can use to create your own music videos. It was free if you signed up with them. And I was like, that's dope. I probably didn't say that directly, but I was like, oh man, that's awesome. They have like a music video studio that I could use. You know, if I want to make a music video, yo, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fly to New York and do that. I never did it, but <laughs> the fact that they offered that, I thought that was awesome. Um, here's copyright protection for the person who in the comments who was asking about copyright. Um, like I said, everything's there. And then when I got all the information I needed, you know, I went through all this stuff. The next, the last thing I did was I went to support and I sent them a bunch of emails asking questions. I wanted to find out from the support staff, do they actually do this? Yes or no. Do they actually do this? Yes or no. Do they support new independent artists like me and my genre and what I'm doing? And, you know, what are things that they can do for, you know, for someone like me and what, 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 um, what services do they provide for someone in, in my position who doesn't have a lot of money, who's trying to, who's trying to do stuff. And they were like, on top of it, they answered every question that they possibly could. Answered every question and did not did not skip on any questions that I had to ask. Cause I asked like 20 something questions back to back and they answered them like right on the spot. So that's why I use one RPM because they were upfront, they were honest, they answered all my questions. And you should have questions. You should ask them questions. You should bug their support. That's what they're there for. Uh, I'm not trying to like ramble on forever, but I'm just giving you guys helpful insight. Like always do research on who you're working with. You know, always do research on whose services you're using because you don't know what could happen. You know, like the whole incident with DistroKid. I'm not going to cover that. There have been a lot of issues with DistroKid, but you know, if you use DistroKid and you're happy with their services, then that's good. You know, that's good. You want it, you should be happy with the services that are provided to you from a company. If you're paying for their services, either through time or money, you should be happy with those services. If you're not happy with the services, find someone else. There's really no brand loyalty anymore in these days. It's just, you know, whoever has the best option go with it, you know, for as long as you feel comfortable. And if you stay with them for the rest of your life, awesome. If you don't, you know, do whatever is best to help you in your situation. And as I always say, I'm gonna get off my soapbox, but that's it for me. I'm sorry this video was so long. If you stayed through to the end, um, let me know if there's anything that I, that I missed that you probably need help with. I covered all the comments that I've seen about one RPM and the questions that people had about like copyright videos, um, uploads, support, stuff like that. Um, I covered all the questions that I saw a lot of. 
I didn't see any questions that were about anything else having to do with one RPM. But if you have any more questions, let me know and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And with that note, I'm out. Um, I have more videos coming up, so stay tuned for those. But other than that, explore, do your research, and I wish you success, man, because the market's changing and who knows where it's going to go, especially with this pandemic. So, you know, if this is your passion, you know, making music or, you know, rhyming or singing or, you know, making a change through spoken word or something, jump on it, you know, get it out there, do it while you can, because you never know what's going to happen in the future. All right. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.